You're on mute, baby girl. You're on mute, Doc. Okay, so as I was explaining a little earlier, um, our founder and her daughter are on the other circuit with a potential president of um, a new chapter in the Philippines. So I'm sorry, we, we got kicked off. Anyway, I'm glad to see we are all collected back. I am going to wait for another two minutes for folks who may have gotten kicked off to jump back in. But um, I'm happy to have you here. How is everyone today? Fantastic. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I want to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Monica Riley, and I am the president of Women of Global Change, Las Vegas chapter. And I am thrilled that you are here to join us and uh, listen to the wisdom of my four esteemed panelists who will be, I'm telling you, these ladies will be sharing their expertise in the areas of mindset, rebranding, financing, and personal finance for women. Um, we have been through such a year, right? Such a much. <laughs> and shift happens. But when shift happens, what do we as business owners do as far as rebranding? How do we get back into the seat of prosperity? How do we get back into the mindset? Um, I know it's been a rough year for all of us, but I just want us to kind of settle in for a minute, take a little time, get comfortable and relaxed, grab a notebook, because I'm sure you're going to want to take notes. And there are just a few housekeeping things I want to share with you at the start of this call. Uh, before you hear from our esteemed panelists, uh, I want to talk about the March membership special that we at WGCLV have going on. And I will drop that information in the chat in a minute. Uh, we are offering a free gift membership if you sign up between March 1st and March 31st. This is a $197 value and this membership will bring you so many possibilities and, and so many enterprises with respect to networking, uh, meeting savvy business women like yourselves, community service. And we, we hope that you will find there's a little bit of something for everyone in our chapter. And we hope that you will join us. Also, I want to talk about another event that's coming up. A national event, Women of Global Change, is sponsoring Spring Forward 2021. This is the heart brainchild of our founder, Dame Shelley Hunt. She has in her mind, and I know we're going to do it, 10,000 meals for 10,000 kids. We are collaborating with Feed the Children and for just $15, $15 contribution, you will be putting food on the table of 75 children. And um, I just want to offer, I, I will also place that link in the, in the chat below once we get started. I also just want to offer a little hope before we hear from our first panelist, Evelyn Thompson Hilbert. And that is, you know, this has been a rough year, but if you think of ourselves and our businesses as that lotus, that has to, it's so resilient, right? And so strong, it's got to make its way through that murky mud and it blossoms into such a beautiful bloom. Think of that. Let's start there with our intentions. We are nourishing and nurturing lotus flowers, which are our businesses. And our first guest is Evelyn Thompson Hilbert. Evelyn received her professional spiritual counselor license at the Agape University of Transformational Studies and Leadership in Los Angeles, where she was co-director of Agape's Peace Ministry, working on projects including a season for nonviolence and forgiveness councils 
in collaboration with the South African Consulate. Other service projects included the Prison, Environmental, Homeless, and Adoption Ministries. She facilitated classes in Universal Principles, New Thought, Ancient Wisdom Teachings, Spiritual Practices, Self-Mastery, and Practical Mysticism at Agape University. She completed additional studies at the Institute of Ancient Mysteries with extensive spiritual work in Egypt, Peru, Kenya, and the United States. Evelyn currently resides in Las Vegas. She is an adjunct instructor at the College of Southern Nevada's Community Health Worker course and leads the Future of Work pillar with Nevada Partners West Las Vegas Promise Neighborhood. She is the founder and CEO of Mindful Alliances LLC and creator of Stop, Drop and Breathe Mindful Leadership Retreats. She also facilitates mindfulness workshops addressing multiculturalism, race, adoption, adult survivors of childhood abuse, and how to use mindful techniques to heal. Welcome, Evelyn. If you would please unmute yourself. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome. Helpful. Thank you for joining us this evening. You are very welcome. I'm very excited to be here. I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> So we know that mindset is everything. And we always hear the, the Monica, buzzword. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but people are messaging in the group that they're in the waiting room waiting to get in. Thank you. You're going to have to keep an eye on that since you're the host. Thank you. Yeah, that's going to be consistent. So I just keep getting messages of people waiting in the waiting room. Gotcha. Um, Evelyn, can you? No. Start with telling us what mindfulness means. Well, one thing that I like to say a lot is I don't like to give a definition, but offer my definition because I believe that mindfulness, there are a million different uh, disciplines. A lot of times it's most often associated with Zen or Buddhist traditions. Um, my background, as you've said already, is in ancient um, mysteries and ancient Egyptian mysteries specifically. So for me, mindfulness is bringing my full attention to the present moment. And I just invite everybody, really, there's, there's really no right or wrong answer for that. So in the nutshell, that's my definition. <laughs> I have a question for you, Evelyn. We are exactly <laughs> one year into this pandemic. What industries do you see emerging in demand right now? Yeah, um, especially because of my work in community health worker work, I end up allied with healthcare. I would say healthcare would be the biggest because of obvious reasons. We are post pandemic. Um, as we know, there's a lot of issues going on with frontline workers and a lot of other things. But because I work in workforce development, uh, that is one of the leading, and I do believe, of course, all the, the data is not back in after post-COVID, but it already was a huge sector that was not only growing, but at the top of the growth sectors. Post-COVID, I believe, has affected that so adversely, especially in despair or concentrated poverty areas, as we're hearing over and over, specifically um, communities of color and African-American communities. So. Healthcare and in a, a myriad from community health worker all the way through is ever increasing and there's legislation underway here in the state of Nevada um, that's helping to expand access uh, for, for better pay for community health workers in, in other healthcare areas. Another one, I said healthcare, I'm sorry. Another one that I think uh, we all can agree with, we've seen a massive increase in self-care in all different sides of it. And of course, Dr. Monica, you are very familiar with that. But I think people have, have uh, because of a myriad of things, whether it's isolation, whether it's fear about uh, the uncertainty of the future or all of the things, the quarantining, the, the fear of getting the virus itself, I believe that goes hand in hand. So we hear a lot of it as, as a mental health issue but I really think it's, it's hand in hand with the self-care issue. 
and of course um, self-care as a sector, which of course I feel that mindfulness is a huge part of as far as one taking care of oneself. And what is the biggest challenge that your clients are currently facing? And also what insights do you offer for us to get unstuck? Um, my clients, which mostly I've been working a lot with local nonprofits and in the education and in, in more of those kind of realms, as well as some of the private clients. So I will say from the nonprofit standpoint and dealing with, with racial systemic racism and a lot of the disparities, I would say that the most challenging thing is um, all of those issues being exacerbated. And of course, with the recent news with the Asian American Pacific Islander community, the, I, would, I would say it's a fear, almost a, a high level of, of terror about just being in this country during, um, during this really turbulent time. So dealing with fear and then I work a lot with the leaders in the community. So burnout, um, nonprofit burnout is a, very, is a very huge area that's been researched a lot. And a lot of the leaders that are serving the communities. So in times of crisis, such as what we're dealing with, with COVID and so on the civil unrest, COVID pandemic, um, people that are in the, in the front lines, not just in the healthcare industry, but trying to help in all these different areas, whether it's civic leaders, whether it's our healthcare leaders, a lot of people are just experiencing an exponentially new level of, of overwhelm. And that, that is what I would say is the most, that burnout and overwhelm. And so how to deal with that for me, one of the things I share a lot is, um, a method, actually, it was a retreat that I developed last year called the Stop, Drop, and Breathe Retreat, which is now trademarked. Um, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> so we can all do that together if that's okay with everyone. Sure, absolutely. We, we breathe so much on the surface that we don't even realize it. And, you know, our culture many years ago when I lived in Tokyo, Tokyo lived was this really rapid pace. And the U.S. workforce has kind of taken that over. So there is, as we can't now go to work sick because of obvious reasons, right? But instead what's happening now, Zoom fatigue, we're all Zoomed out or platformed out and people are going, 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 but not just stopping. So if everyone would join me, just a quick mindfulness tool that I would like to leave everybody with is called stop, drop, and breathe. I'm not claiming I'm the inventor of that phrase, but it's used in a lot of mindful and self-care circles, right? So the first thing is, if everybody is available to just close your eyes, just stop and pause for a moment. Drop any thinking, any efforting, just for a moment. Drop the thinking of what I have to do, should have done. And then just breathe. Take three very deep breaths. And with each inhale and exhale, just slowing down just for a moment. As I bring my full attention to this moment. And one more deep breath. And when you exhale, just gently allow the eyes to open. And that is a tool that we can use anywhere, anytime. And if I am in the workplace or in a setting where I can't close my eyes, I can do an internal focus and shift my attention just for a moment within to stop, drop the effort in and just breathe. Thank you, Evelyn. I know what, tell us what you're doing after you leave us this evening, because it's very exciting. It's one of the things that we as female founders do. We juggle so much. So just quickly, what are you about to hop off of here and get into? Thank you for that. And I really wish I could say stay. So ladies, I will meet you all again and everyone who's here because um, I, as I teach the community health worker class at the College of Southern Nevada, which is a workforce class 
what is so exciting about it and what people don't know, it is a very old area, uh, 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 profession, so to speak. And it was actually, it's still very popular in, in Europe, in Russia. And what, it, what I do is train community members to advocate non-clinical uh, leaders within everyone's own community, whatever, however anyone identifies their community. And it's an eight week course and we facilitate cultural humility, um, how to find resources. And we have guest speakers in from all over the community. And so tonight just happens to be the graduation from our very first class of the year 2021. And we're doing it virtually. We never would do this virtually before, but we had to overnight go online. So the, so the blessing of it all is that I get to be here instead of in the car having to drive. So I'm very excited. And again, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to just talk about that. It's, it's very exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and have a wonderful graduation ceremony. Thank you. And I can't wait to watch the video to see everyone else. So have a wonderful evening and I look forward to seeing everyone again. Thank you so much, Dr. Monica. You're very welcome, Evelyn. Thank you. You're welcome. See everybody. Well, one thing I know that we do really well as female founders is we know how to affirm ourselves, right? Oftentimes we learn that exercise where we look in the mirror when we wake up every day and for us to get into the right mindset to start our businesses, run, run, start our businesses, run our families and everything else that we juggle on our plates, we'll look into that mirror and say, you are smart, you are beautiful, you are courageous, whatever the words you use to affirm yourself. But what I'd like to offer as a mindset tip is think about affirming your businesses. Many of you juggle multiple businesses, so you're wearing different hats during the course of a day. And that is phenomenal. You all are phenomenal phenomenal women and we don't affirm our efforts that we pour into our businesses. So I want everyone to come off mute for a second. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to show your face on the camera if you don't want to, but please come off mute and say something to the rest of the group of how you will affirm your business. And I'll start with uh, left to right, Alicia Houston. I will affirm my business by not downplaying the small wins. Next, Erica Neville. I will affirm my business by showing up every single day like a professional. Next, Galit Ventura Rosen. Hey everybody. I affirm my business by continuing to schedule time off for my business. <laughs> Next, Afia Evans. I will affirm my business by being confident in the investment that I'm making in my business and knowing that they're worth it. That's a good one. Next, Monica Cheney. Bickerstaff. <laughs> okay. Another Monica Bickerstaff. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> I will affirm my business by believing in myself and believing in my product and the value that it can bring to people. Thank you. Ileana Burgos. Can you come off mute? Tell us how you will affirm your business. I'm sorry, you might hear a little bit of children noise in the background. No problem. <laughs> That's delightful. I will, <laughs> I will affirm my business by trusting my intention and guiding, be guided by that as I serve my customers and my clients. All right, thank you. Ari, how will you affirm your business? I also have children in the background. So if you hear it, I will affirm my business 
by keeping my emotions at bay sometimes, maybe kind of leaving them at the door per se, and just focus on my client's needs. Denise Jackson, how will you affirm your business? I think she's still on mute. Yeah. Denise, can you unmute yourself? Tell us how you will affirm your business. Okay, well, Denise is unmuting. We will go to Michelle Rothstein. Tell us how you will affirm your business. Absolutely. Um, I will continue to, I will affirm my business by continuing to pivot um, and being very mindful of my employees and my clients as we navigate through this pandemic. Alisa Flowers, how will you affirm your business? Good evening, ladies. I will affirm my business by taking action in the marketing area of my business. Crystal White, how will you affirm your business? I will affirm my business by forging ahead, no matter how hard or frustrating or any obstacles that might come my way. And we have um, area code 215. I know that is, um, what, Philadelphia? We have a Philadelphia phone. If you can unmute, fine. If you're driving or something, please don't. Um, please don't. Um, I will affirm my business uh, by continuing to affirm other businesses. And I would at this time invite you to Drop links to your businesses, your websites, your services, um, your social media handles, drop them in the chat. How can we reach you? How can we find you? Um, I know that, you know, if we don't uplift each other, who will? And if not now, when? <laughs> right? Okay. So according to Forbes, more than 75,000 women-owned businesses shuttered last year due to ramifications surrounding the pandemic. However, women, we came through with resiliency. In spite of that bleak 75,000, 89% of new women-owned businesses were started. And of that 89%, 51% were businesses started by women of color. Now, those statistics are very uplifting. They're very positive. But when you look on the side of funding, venture capital, we still are women-owned businesses secure maybe 2% of venture capital every year. And of that 2%, women of color owned businesses secure maybe 0.64%. So what do we do? What shift do we make now? I say that one of the most important things, and this is how we acquire our savvy as women is how we present ourselves. What face do we present to the rest of the world? As a business owner, I know that I place a high priority on my brand. My brand is a global brand, natural beauty and wellness. And it is a brand that is inspired by my 101 year old grandmother using her unprecedented recipes in the areas of wellness, spa and body care and luxury 
perfumes and fragrances that I handcraft through sustainable methods. They're very sophisticated and they are extremely sensual. So that's my brand in a nutshell. We know that brand is much more than a color palette and logo. And up next is a woman that I, rep I deeply respect as far as juggling multiple companies and being an expert in branding. And that is Galit Ventura Rosen, our sales success business expert. Galit Ventura Rosen is a sales success business expert, author of The Successful Woman's Mindset and more than 25 year commercial real estate broker and owner. She is an award-winning international speaker on the topics of leadership, business, and the successful mindset. She currently owns four businesses and Galit is most recently the recipient of the Entrepreneur of the Year Award by Silver State Awards and was featured recently on the cover of the Top 100 Real Estate Agents International Magazine. Galit shows women how to take their businesses to six and seven figures and I'm hoping you can share your secret sauce <laughs> with us tonight, Galit, in that area. Um, as our branding expert, Galit, how do we post-pandemic rebrand our businesses or what should we be thinking about as we configure and reconfigure our companies? Well, Welcome. No problem. Thank you, Monica. One of the things that I saw a lot in the last year was shock value of this idea that I have to shut down my brick and mortar business. And oh my gosh, I wasn't prepared to be online. And I think if we learned anything in the last year, and what I would suggest is you've got to always recognize that having different income streams, and it could be from the same business, there can be multiple income streams from the same business, but there's something so valuable. So I'll give you an example. When the city shut down in Las Vegas, which was, believe it or not, a year ago yesterday, I think, uh, my commercial real estate came to a halt for eight weeks. Everybody went into shock. It's investors. They purchased properties. Oh my God, what's going to happen to our economy? And during that time, thankfully, I had other income streams. But if not, being in commercial real estate, sometimes it takes six, eight, 10 months to close a deal. And now I lost those eight weeks to work. So that's an example. We also saw a lot of brick and mortar businesses, businesses that had boutique, uh, boutique clothing and, and consignment stores and, and spas. I know so many solopreneurs that own their own businesses. They were just done. They were shut down 100% without another income stream. So the first thing that I would suggest is we look at this from a place of learning and look at our businesses from the outside in, which sometimes we can't do for ourselves. Sometimes we need that outside help to say, hey, where else can I develop multiple income streams. So if anything happens in one of those areas, I'm still able to make money in others. Right. And along with the multiple income streams, you know, all of this ties together. I'm going to ask you a mindset question. Sure, so with sure. the multiple in income streams and, you know, just with the shock of shuttering, those of us who shuttered, our businesses um, and with the shock of living here in Las Vegas and the city being totally shut down, what would you offer as advice as far as resetting our mindset, uh, getting us the wheels stoked again so that we can look at our prosperity in a positive way? I think that's something that we should be doing every day, even when we're not in a pandemic and even when things are going well or not well. So what I would suggest is you've got to recognize that this can work against your health, 
This thing is so powerful, this thing up here. It works against your health. It works against your emotions. It can work against your thoughts. It's amazing what our mind can do, but it can also work the opposite way. So it's not a challenge to be positive and have a successful mindset when things are going well. The actual test is when things are not going well. So I'll give you an example, Dr. Monica. I saw so many women businesses flourish when we shut down. I know people that started new businesses. I'm one of them. My business partner and I started a new business during the eight week shutdown because everything else slowed down and I had all this free time. And the last year has been amazing in this new business. So people succeed. So many people succeed in hard times. You guys, we've seen it. Why are they succeeding? Because they recognize that even when things are not going well, there are opportunities. What was the opportunity? So for example, my opportunity, and I don't mean opportunity like I'm going to make money on people. We realized there was such a need for women that had to go online and had no clue how to. So let's start a business, which was free to everyone for about six months, where we uplift and support in a group so women can find a place to go because they have no clue what they're doing. So you can find opportunity in helping others. So the mindset piece is really about recognizing, step away from the emotion. And that's not easy to do, but you've got to step away from the emotion of that fear of this end of the world mentality. And I don't mean to be extreme, but that's what happened to so many people. But those of us that continued on recognize that, okay, wait, I've been here before. Maybe it was a little different, but in the 2008 recession, being in real estate, oh my gosh, what I went through. So yes, it was an unknown, but that was an unknown as well. So if you look at something from your past that you've gone through, and we've all gone through something, when you're in it, you can't see the light. But if you step away from it and look at it from a different perspective, which is not emotional, you now can make decisions that could benefit you. So that's what I suggest with the mindset. Thank you. That's very helpful. I know along with rebranding, mindset, as we talk about pivot and write the word pivot, let's talk about that word for a second because pivot is the orange that has become the new black. We keep hearing that word and it means something different to everyone. We all have, as Galit mentioned, we all have experienced things, we've bounced back from things and we all come from a different perspective. But one thing that I found that's a common thread is financing our businesses. What are different alternatives and ways that we as women can finance our businesses if we have not um, fared well through the PPP or the EIDL or any of those other acronyms? There are so many creative ways that we as women can finance our businesses and also maintain a positive fiscal mental health. And our next panelist, Ms. Erica Neville, she is a financial analyst for women and she's going to share a little bit with us about the financial reset. Erica Neville was born and raised in Philadelphia. And since 2003, when Erica became co-owner of Her, Her Rising, an online magazine, she has been dedicated to encouraging, empowering, and enriching the lives of women. While the magazine is no longer in circulation, Erica remains an advocate for women. As a single mom, Erica learned firsthand the importance of a woman investing in herself. After a five-figure decision to invest in her man's dream, she was forced into bankruptcy after his untimely death. She not only had to repair her credit, but her self-worth as well. It taught Erica an important and valuable lesson that true investment begins with oneself.
By nature, we as women tend to take care of others before ourselves. So she encourages women to put on their financial oxygen mask and breathe life into and investing into themselves first. Erica is on a crusade to get people's finances off life support by providing CPR, a cash plan resuscitation that transforms financial DNA for generations to come. Erica is the mother of one son, Brian. She is a licensed financial coach and advisor who provides individuals, families, and small business owners with real world tips and tools, which they can easily implement in order to get the traction needed to make the changes that they desire in their lives. Erica is also the author of Every Woman's Guide to Wheel Wealth, Unblock Your Chakras and Raise Your Money Vibe. When she is not working, you might catch her at the beach reading a book. Welcome this evening, Erica. And I know it's late for you where you are. <laughs> So <laughs> thank you very much for joining us tonight. Absolutely, Dr. Monica. I am just so honored to be here. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, we're excited to have you. And I'm excited, especially since you're talking about money. How did the pandemic affect female founders' finances? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, as Galit was talking about, some women, they did extraordinary, um, you know, starting businesses. And then we had other women who kind of folded when it came into the pandemic because we didn't know what to do. Uh, there was that uncertainty that came about. And a lot of women just said, I don't know what to do. And that kind of went inside and just shut down their businesses without looking at other options that may have been available for them. Um, you know, like um, one of the things that uh, is in my head from what Galit talked about is having several businesses within your one business. So what, can, what are some of the things that you can do? I know uh, one lady who owned a hairdresser, um, a beauty salon, what she started doing was making products and sending out kits to her clients because they still wanted their hair done. And, uh, you know, I, I had another gentleman, he manufactures a fingernail polish. And he says, I don't know why, but last year was the best year I've ever had in like 20 years of business. And I said, hello, we had to do our own nails, <laughs> right? And so uh, when it comes to uh, those finances, one of the things that is just so important is what a lot of people learned is the importance of having that budget and having that emergency fund. And so when you think about an emergency fund, uh, you say, do I need three months? Do I need six months? And I tell people, start where you are, you know, even if it's a one day emergency fund. So you start wherever you are and you just build upon that. So just learning, uh, because we talk about the, the pandemic and uh, a lot of people did lose their jobs, but a lot of people kept their jobs and got additional monies, um, whether it was through the stimulus or other avenues. So it's just a thing of learning how money works and making it work to your advantage. And speaking of um, working to our advantage, and you know what, it's so interesting because those of us who have um, self-care businesses or spa beauty brands and businesses, um, we did thrive. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it was all of a sudden back to what we came from once again, um, doing our own hair, <laughs> coloring our own hair, those who dared to do that, um, our nails, you know, taking care of those things that are important as far as self-care and also as far as maintaining our family's self-care. So those in those business, those of us who were in those business industries thrived and those of us who were not in those business industries, I saw many pivot. For example, I, I know several hairdressers who um, you know, either they were shut out of their own salons or they chose not to go in. Um, they started making uh, wigs on online, you know, high custom wigs and selling them, you know, $400, $500 a piece. Mm -hmm. And um, 
so that's how they thrived in or you know we as women were so freaking resilient that's the bottom line <laughs> you know, we find a way to get through anything and with that being said can you offer two strategies for the financial reset for women Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So one strategy I would recommend for women when it comes to resetting, whether it, you had to go through your emergency fund or your retirement, uh, one thing is just to sit down and think of what your prosperity plan is going to be. So that is a lot of women don't like the word budget. Right. And so I use prosperity planning as, a, as an alternative for that, because you are looking at how are you going to prosper in your life? How are you going to prosper in your finances? And really, I, I talk about the five F's. Right. So it's family, finances, fitness, fun and faith. And so when you look at all of that, it's not just about money, when it's the mindset and it's what you think about, you bring about. And when you feel good about yourself and the decisions that you make for you and your family, that just changes things. So one thing is to look at that budget, that plan, and decide what services are important to you and your family. So really that's the foundation of what I talk about for anyone is to have that budget, to have that planning. So that's the first strategy I would say, because before you can do anything else, you have to know where you are in order to determine where it is that you need to go. And another thing is the mindset, right? So we're talking about mindset and reset today is to know that it's okay, wherever you are today, give yourself grace. When it comes to finances, a lot of women beat themselves up because they say, I should have known. And I tell them, I said, how do you know something that you were never taught? I said, you know, there's, there's doctors and uh, other sorts of professionals out there. And they also are just like, you know, well, I don't want to talk about my finances because it's a mess. And, you know, we laugh and we joke about that. But it's very serious because if we were never taught about it, you can never get better until you sit down and start getting educated about that. So that's my second strategy is just to sit down, give yourself grace and work with someone in order to get your finances right. And so just with both of those strategies, sitting down, knowing what you have, where you are and where you want to go, and then working with a professional to make sure that you're on track. Those are two great ways to, to reset and get restarted when it comes to your financial situation. Absolutely. Thank you, Erica. You're so welcome. we have explored mindset. We have explored rebranding. We have explored uh, personal finance as women. And now we're going to take a, a look into um, exploring the strategy and the underpinnings, as my Nana would call it, the underpinnings of our businesses. And next, we are going to hear from Alicia Houston, strategic operations expert. Alicia Houston is a certified neuro leadership coach, consultant, and international speaker. Her business experience ranges from Fortune 100 companies to organizations with less than 50 staff members. She is skilled in small business management, including starting new businesses, acquisitions, coaching, and consulting existing businesses. She honed her craft as a female biotech founder in San Diego, where she now incorporates her 20 plus years of experience in neuroscience, communication, and empathy to develop, restructure, and support business owners, companies, and corporations. She is at the forefront of revolutionizing a business culture that creates change. As a leadership expert, speaker, consultant, and executive coach, Alicia is instrumental in implementing strategies and building relationships that positively impact growth, increase effectiveness, improve operational efficiency, and help owners and executives realize their dreams. Welcome, Alicia. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hello. We definitely want to hear from you. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> so my question for you 
is what is your business okay. specifically and how has it done through the pandemic over the last year? Woo, so my business is a training and development organization. And as Dr. Monica said, we work with Fortune 100 all the way to my heart, my small business women owners. And so I, to be quite honest, I had a few opportunities lined up. I was supposed to be speaking at NASA last year. I, I had a trip planned to NASA. I had a trip planned to Cisco, um, the corporate office to speak for their women in power event. And I had another trip planned for Dell. <laughs> Canceled. So we can be honest here, right? That was about $150,000 in revenue just right there. And not to mention, I was going to close the rooms too. be clear, ladies, I was going to close the rooms. I go in with strategy. And so you're sitting here, March 13th, what that's just last week, right? Everything just shuts down. So you know what I did? I drank wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, this is the place to be real, right? This is, this is Alicia. This is what you get. What you see is what you get, but I'm real with you. And then it came a point that I said, okay, the wine is not bringing me any revenue. <laughs> right. <laughs> We've got, we got to make some changes here. So what I did was I tapped into both what Khalid and Erica were talking about. I said, okay, what, Alicia, you have founded and sold a previous biotech company. You understand the power of strategy and operation. So what are we going to do? What do these companies need? This is where you have to shift. I, I'm so tired of the word pivot. I'm not going to lie. This is where I had to shift. And I said, you know, a lot of people, young lady, let's get to doing some networking. So I started reaching out to people at those companies and other companies. Um, and I started asking questions. I got willing to be uncomfortable because what I am seeking is not gonna come in the comfortable space. So I was willing to be uncomfortable and what I found was a match for my skill set. I found that I have an operational excellence that I did, I just, it comes so easy for me that I just, I just do it, right? I just do it, that's many of us here. We just do it, it's like the nose on our face, we just don't even see it because it exists and if we need it to breathe air and gain oxygen, but we just, we just move without even unbeknownst to ourselves. And so that is what I did, Dr. Monica. I tapped in to the excellence within. I began to honor the truth and I tapped into my network and then things began to change. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're transparent about that because um, one of the components of my business is travel. Yeah. And um, like you, I lost upwards of six figures of uh, money Yeah. <laughs> um, because I did not travel last year. Right. And I'm probably not going to travel this year either mm -hmm. until maybe August or September, right. uh, you know, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, shift, we're, we're talking about shift and shift happens and how we shift. <laughs> and one of the things that I did, you know, as you're, like you said, I had to sit back with myself and I had to think about how I could make that money up um, from, from a virtual landscape. Right. And so what I started doing was I started packaging, pre-packaging workshops and holding workshops and open seminars in a virtual space yes. um, and doing that on a global level. Yeah. Um, you know, ladies, our panelists have shared a little bit about what they know. And I know of each of all three and, and Evelyn, who is not with us right now, is that we are all, and they are all internationally uh, and globally savvy. <laughs> and so um, we're not just talking in a national space, you know, part of the mindset is that we have to think broader, right? We have mm -hmm. to, we have to elevate our mindset so that we can realize that we can reach other women, other women business owners, 
we can support other women business owners on a global level. Um, and with that being said, as I was thinking of another question, yes. so, um, has your business seen ups and downs throughout the duration since last March? I mean, literally we are at the one year mark. Right. Um, yesterday, March 17th was when quote unquote, the world stopped for some people. For us here in this space, our worlds started. Mm -hmm. right we started on a whole nother level yes so talk to us you got what it with you? so listen we're here to talk about money what you will find about me is i will speak about money very easily i hold my clients accountable to speak about money we talk p l's we talk balance sheets you, you have to know where you are to know where you're going you have to be able to have those money conversations and look at your bank account so let me tell you what I did. I said, okay, we have this CARES Act, right? There's some amazing provisions in this CARES Act. Alicia, you have a 401k from your previous employment. You have some, you have some opportunities here. So this is where it's very savvy of you to get with people like Erica who have that understanding in finances. And, and Galit, I know you have an understanding in finances too, I'm sure that understand what it looks like when you can tap into some of these resources that you have. And what happens is we will immediately go into a space of fear because we say, if I tap into this, oh my gosh, I'm depleting my nest egg, right? But what are you really doing? No, what I'm doing is I'm about to multiply this nest egg. And so, especially with the CARES Act, with the forgiveness, I was like, okay, to your point, Monica, I am going to reach these Fortune 100s who still need my support, and but I can't get to them. So what I did is I tapped in and I tapped in to create a platform online. And I created my trainings. I mean, so you know, when you create trainings and you're and you're going to deal with Fortune Fives, these types of organizations, I cannot create a training that looks awful. It cannot be podunk. I have to have production. Okay. <laughs> so <Right. laughs> listen, you got to have production. I can't go to Cisco telling you this is $50,000 and it looks like I recorded it in my backyard. They're not going to go for that. So you have to understand this is where the mindset as we're speaking on, this is where the business savvy, the strategy comes in where you understand multiplicity. So we have to get comfortable, and I'm going to speak a little bit here to my women of color, especially. We got to get comfortable in tapping into our resources that we have, understanding that we're going to multiply. We're sitting there in that bank account or that money market. Yeah, you might get a little interest, but what can you really do? So I tapped in, enacted, and, and withdrew money according to the CARES Act, and I invested in someone to help me with creating a beautiful video. I have my image consultant, my stylist. Listen, like I said, we can't, we're coming here to make millions. We're coming here to make multi seven figures. So I can't come in sweats and a t-shirt. So my stylist had to, I had to invest in a stylist and image consultant because I want to look a certain way. I want to personify a certain image, right? And so I invested and I created a training series I marketed it directly, LinkedIn, my friends, LinkedIn, okay? <laughs> directly on LinkedIn. I, I was that one that slid into the inboxes, but I slid in appropriately. Whole strategy behind it, delete, as you know, marketing, right? So whole strategy behind it, not that sleazy saleswoman, but a whole strategy behind it because I did my research. So this is finances, right? I'm spending my finances. But here's the thing, you get that one company, and I got that one pharma company to invest in my LMS money all made back and then some. And now I have a proven product where now I'm honing, streamlining, tweaking a few things here and there where I have it's licensed. So I'm licensing this opportunity out to other companies. I'm creating more trainings. I'm adding to it, right? Value, value people. Hear me, hear me. This yep. is stuff people pay for, y'all. <laughs> value, 
You got to, yes, you got to create the value. But what that takes is finances, right? And so there are ways to tap into finances. And, and, and if we have time, if Dr. Monica chooses, I can share some other ways of other finances, things that, that I have had other clients do, other business owners that have done that may not have had kind of the resources to do some things that have worked out very well for them. So we, this is where we as women, we are innovative. We are built, we are innately wired with an intuitive sense and a creative, we have the creative womb within us, whether we've had children or not. We are the, we are the creative, you know, path of the human society. And so we have to be okay with the creative space and the action to bring it to fruition. And you have to understand everything is not going to be successful. So you take calculated risk. You don't just throw caution to the wind. You take calculated risk. So it's really important that you align yourself with the right people. Absolutely. That's so important. Aligning yourself with the right people. And I have one more question for you. Before I ask you that question, though, uh, several of you came in in the last half hour or so. Please drop your business information, the names of your companies, websites, social media handles. How can we reach you? I want to start a nice uh, business registry here Ooh. this evening. Um, and uh, because this is recorded and the chat is recorded, we'll have all this information consolidated and um, emailed to, to those of you who participated tonight. Um, okay, so Alicia, another question. Yes. What is one key thing that you can share that has been learned over the past year while navigating through so many obstacles? Less is more. I traveled so much. I was, and I'm sure many of you ladies on this call, you travel, you're everywhere, right? Because I equated, I equated busyness with success. Okay. I equated busyness. Oh, I'm traveling over here. I'm going to speak here. I'm going to do this with success. But what I have found, I have traveled less, traveled none, like, you know, twice to see family or something. And I had the best year ever. But, and that's because of the shift in mindset, right? So my, my number one key is that busyness does not equate to success. And I have such a deeper relationship with my family now. And it is just so beautiful. I'm so blessed. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Yeah, I know. I know, uh, you know, as, as I um, presented an image for us to think about, you know, that lotus flower, you know, I'm, I'm happier now <laughs> than I've been in a very long time. Um, and it's because of quality time spent with family, um, quality uh, time invested into my business, and also the openness and the mindfulness at needing to learn something new, needing to reach out to my sisters, my savvy sisters in business and, um, you know, teach me something new. And with that, I want to ask each one of you a rapid fire question as I go through the questions in the chat. What is your preferred social media platform and why? And we'll start with Galit. I don't like picking one, Dr. Monica. Um, I teach about social media lead gen and, and visibility. So I think it depends on your business. But uh, for me right now, my focus is Facebook and LinkedIn, but it's for different businesses. What do you find that is profitable for you with respect to Facebook. Why, why do you like Facebook? Oh gosh, remember that business I started during COVID? Yes. We, have, we, we started a group less than a year ago and we are up to 8,400 women. 
Wow. Nice. There's a lot of ways to monetize Facebook. It's just a different level of client. So Facebook will be my clients for maybe 20 bucks up to a thousand, maybe $2,000. And then LinkedIn will be my women that are going to pay 25 grand for a mastermind. So um, Alicia and I are like, so on the same page. And so LinkedIn is brilliant, but it doesn't fit for everybody, but it fits for my business, for my business models. And then of course my commercial real estate, it's all LinkedIn. Okay, hey, Erica, what is your preferred voice on social media and why? My preferred is Facebook, and that's because that's where my ladies are. So my niche is working with women uh, between 45 and 55, and that's where I find them uh, in different Facebook groups, travel groups, uh, things that I like to do. It's where I go to meet um, my ideal client. So that's why I love Facebook. It gives me so many choices when it comes to looking for the things that I like to do, and I just have that many opportunities to, to just meet new women. Alicia, you're next up. Yes, ma'am. So I will say as far as creative expression, it will be Instagram. But it's so funny because I just have to put this caveat. I was kind of sequestering myself, not being myself on Instagram. And, and that was last year. And I was like, yeah, I can't do that anymore. I've got to just be all of me. So my Instagram is a little bit more of expression it, it talks about events i'm doing things like that because linkedin as we know it can it's very it can be a bit stoic and 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 bland <laughs> so but there's a purpose right they all have purposes so instagram connect with my friends my people get loving on me and i'm loving on them and so that type of environment and engagement but for linkedin definitely LinkedIn for uh, my business, but some of my LinkedIn business people follow me on Instagram because they're just those type of people. And so we have just amazing relationships. Yeah. Those two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I but like them too as well. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I find that I'm on all of them too, but I, I, I use Facebook and Facebook and Instagram more now that I learned how to really get into Instagram. <laughs> um, I did not see any questions in the chat. So I am going to ask those of you who are in our audience this evening, if you have a question to come off mute, unmute yourselves, please. That's the, the, the other new phrase of 2020, unmute yourself. <laughs> You're on mute um, and uh, ask a question. Ask one of our guests a question. I see some of you out there. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Monica. This is Afia Evans. Um, Hello, Afia Evans. I'm loving this conversation. This is wonderful. Um, so my business is I am an image consultant and an executive stylist. And um, I'm so happy that we're talking about the social media aspect. Um, I've recently made a shift. <laughs> and so now I'm, I'm dealing with executive clients uh, and doing speaking to like corporate entities like that about image and about styling. I wondered if anybody had any tips for uh, LinkedIn because I recently have um, started my LinkedIn account in that area. It seems to me that they're kind of wanting you to already be established in order to do some of the things that they want you to do with your corporate account or with your business account. Um, if there are any tips as to how to, I don't want to say get around it, but how to bolster a new business account on LinkedIn so that it will generate the kind of leads and things that you want it uh, to do. And that's my question. Great question. Ladies, who wants to answer that question? Do I have any savvy LinkedIn? Everybody's answer? waiting to give somebody else a chance. <laughs> I'm waiting and she's waiting and I'm like, I don't want to go. I want to let her talk. <laughs> uh, so you've got to let go of that mindset. I don't know what this is. I'm not established stuff. I, I had a class today, my mastermind class. And one of the women's like, Lee, 
I don't have a following on LinkedIn. I'm just getting started. I go, you wake up tomorrow morning and you start like you've been on there forever. That's exactly what you do. It's not about how many people are following you or your presence. It's about what you're doing from today. So just start and just see how it goes because it's about value and content over quantity. Don't worry. I have to tell you, I know so many of my clients that have 10,000 people on LinkedIn or 8,000, and they're not getting engagement of people that have 1,000 or 500. So just recognize it'll take some time. But I say, set up a marketing plan, first and foremost, put out valuable content. Now, LinkedIn is all about teaching, not selling. You want to teach something. So start planning videos and start planning posts that are teaching what you're an expert in. And then people will start seeing that and the algorithms will start working for you. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to follow up with that. Um, like literally, I tried to start a company page on LinkedIn and it literally told me you don't have enough connections or things to do this. And so, so, so I'm I gonna not like, let oh, wow, okay, have, you know what I mean? I don't wanna put anything out there. I didn't have that experience. So no, I'm gonna let Alicia let jump in. <laughs> when I started my business page, I don't have anybody on it, barely. I've started groups and I do it constantly for different businesses. So maybe Ali, I don't know anything about why they would say no to you. Yeah, no. it wasn't that you, um, so I'm trying to put like my logos onto my page for me and it won't let you bring in your logo unless you have a company page, but then it won't let you create a company page if you don't have a lot of engagement and connection, which I'm kind of like, do I really want to do that without my logo, without all the things that I want on there? Do I want to start reaching out to people? I guess the answer is yes. Just go ahead and do it whether you have all that stuff on there or not. But yeah, they literally told me no. Yeah, I'm going to see if Alicia knows a little more. I don't, I've never experienced that. I have my logo. I have everything. So I'm very curious which route you're taking, but please, if you know something that I don't, Alicia, go ahead. I think Selena, you had you had some input. Well, I just wanted to ask what what your business is, and um, the other thing is, I've, from what I've, I'm just getting started on LinkedIn too. But I've, I'm hearing that it's better to to bolster your personal page for people to connect to you, a, as opposed to the to the company. So first, well, uh, so I have I actually have one personal page that's like my career because I had a total other career before I started doing this and it has nothing to do with what I'm doing now. So I have that one page. So I created a personal page for my image consulting and styling business that I have now. And that's the one that I was using and trying to connect with. But in order to put your logos and the things you know associated with your business on there, you have to have a separate company page. Yes. So oh. they have to know that you have a real company and that's the page that they're saying, no, you can't create it because you don't have enough engagement or anything yet. So, yes. you know, I can go ahead and do the engagement, but it's not going to have all the things on it that I would like. So, okay. Thank you for that, that, um, that clarity. Cause I did not realize that you had your previous page and you're not utilizing the previous page. You started brand new. So yes, LinkedIn, you have to get to a certain amount of personal followers before it's going to even allow you to create a business profile. So the way to do that. So let me tell you, I, I I did not really start getting active on LinkedIn until the beginning of last year, because that even before COVID, because that was kind of my business coach was like, okay, this is, we got to start moving on LinkedIn. So I didn't even have a business um, LinkedIn until uh, January of this year. And so what I would do is I would publish articles. I would publish things of value just to Galit's point. And then that was, that brought me into the algorithms. And then, then I made sure I reached out to my friends. Hey, you need to, I'm, I'm about to friend, you need to come on and be my friend on LinkedIn because then they'll share. And then you tell them, you get a little group, you say, okay, I just shared an article. Would y'all please go read it and comment on it? So it does take some efforting, especially when you're starting from scratch. Um, I remember I had reached out to this, this one woman had said something, she was doing something on LinkedIn. I said, I want to be a part of it. She goes, um, sweetie, you have to at least have 500 people. <laughs> I was like, my bad. <laughs> so, but it's, it's, so it's a thing. It's a thing. 
thing on LinkedIn. So definitely, uh, to Galit's point, I, I have no doubt you will be bringing a lot of value. You will be helping people with their wardrobes for their for platforms such as this. I know you have helped me tremendously. And so I already know that they're going to love you. And so that's what it is. So I didn't realize that there was, this is a new profile. There, there's, it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. But you will get in the algorithm quickly. As Delete said, as you are making, you're posting value and helping people in their, you know, how they show up at work on, on these types of platforms and, and giving them confidence, courage, all of those things are going to be very valuable. But yes, tap into your friends and say, okay, this is, I'm going to, my personal page has started and we need to start connecting. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Thank You're you. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for your questions. All right. Anyone? Oh, oh, post your LinkedIn so we can all. Um... Uh, sign into your LinkedIn. Right, so okay. we can start. But I'll post it again, <laughs> just to make Yeah, sure. post it again, because everything moves quickly through the chat. So post it again. And Ileana, now we have a post with a purpose. Uh, Faith friended you also on LinkedIn already. So <laughs> you awesome. may not know who that was, but it was me. <laughs> awesome, awesome. That's the way to network. Does anybody else have a question that you'd like to ask one of our panelists at this time? Okay, so think about your questions as I ask mine. <laughs> so as we look at 2021, we are now at the end of the first quarter of 2021. Things are beginning to open up and perhaps there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, share with us what's next or what your next strategy is to scale your business. Erica. Well, thanks, Dr. Monica. Yes, it's like, oh my goodness, it's the end of March coming up soon. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to Saturday, which is the first day of spring. So <laughs> I am excited about that. Um, so when it comes to what is, what is next to, to scale my business, for me, I am staying the course because I put things into place during this first quarter, that's gonna allow me to be able to scale up. So one is meeting more, more ladies. I'm looking to, to grow my agency of female advisors. So that's one thing that I've started to do. Um, and like Alicia, I, I, I hate that word pivot now. You just hear it all over the place. Um, but that's one thing that I wasn't concentrating on before, but because of the pandemic and speaking to um, not just women, but men as well, uh, but mainly women, when it came to their finances, they were just thrown in a tizzy. I had women who weren't sure if they were going to be able to keep their jobs, and it just threw a lot of us in a, in a different space. And so what I found is that women open up more to women than they do to men, because there's just this different understanding. And so that is what I'm using uh, to build my, my firm of women advisors. Um, so that's how I'm going to scale up. And that's why my niche is working with women. And that's because just my own background, I didn't have the education. And if I had someone speaking to me about what my future was and the things that I should have set up into place, then I would have been different. My son would have been different uh, as we grew up. And so my job is just to get the word out and just have us speaking to us because we know what we've been through. We have that empathy. And that's one thing that women, uh, when it comes to finances in their, in their lives, the one thing that women look for is security. And so sometimes we don't recognize that that's what it is that we're looking for. And so by me building and scaling, I'm going to be able to speak to more women uh, in particular when it comes to, to just being secure and knowing where their, their numbers are. And so whether it's in business or personal life, it's just very important to know your numbers. It is important to know your numbers. That is the truth. Alicia, how are you planning to scale this year? So um, there's two things. I am actually, because I just shared with you that the corporate client realm is, is ramping up, I am going to be adding to what I call my bench. So I'm going to be bringing in other coaches to help support the learning, right? So my curriculum, 
my teaching, bringing them in so we can mobilize and we can have a larger impact with brain-based learning. It's, uh, so I'm so excited with that. And then secondly, I realized that for our small business owners, my, women that like all of us that are on this call, one of the places where we really get caught up is in the operations. We don't have those foundations in place. And if we don't know what they are to have them, we, we don't know what we're missing. We just feel like we're continuously spinning our wheels and maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this anyway. So really looking to allow some space to work on smaller time projects with small business owners to really help them tighten up operations, look at their money, create strategies, and then they can mobilize and go make that money, find where the money resides. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and and Galit, how do you plan to scale this year? How long do you have? <laughs> How long do you have, Dr. Monica? Um, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I know. I have too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, There's so much going on. It's insane. So uh, the way that I'm scaling in a logical perspective without giving details because there's different businesses is I'm recognizing more and more the value of my hour. Saying no has been a big part of my growth in the last four to five years recognizing that, and I always use this example because I look up to her, Oprah doesn't say yes to everything. She gets asked to do 6,000 gazillion, better yet, she doesn't even say no to people, other people do it for her. So one of the things that I'm learning is that uh, aside from doing what I do best, which is put together teams to delegate to, I'm also recognizing that saying no is part of the road to success because not every opportunity is directly correlated with the goals that you want to accomplish. So I'm getting way more focused in that aspect. All my businesses are scheduled to scale up this year and produce more income and grow. That's just kind of what I like to do every single year. And I'm excited to start traveling again. <laughs> um, my biggest recharge my entire life has been going to concerts and traveling. And both of those things have kind of come to a halt. So I'm really excited to be able to step away soon and take some time to be able to do those things again. Me too. I mean, I, I, I think all of us are, and I know I'm, I'm a traveler as well, and I'm missing a change of scenery. <laughs> you know, it's way overdue. <laughs> um, so I think it's interesting that you talked about boundaries and, and, in our last fireside chat, we, we had a really good in-depth talk about boundaries. Uh, boundaries are so important to us, um, regardless of what stage your business is in. What kind of advice do you offer experts, my experts? What advice do you offer this wonderful gathering of women this evening uh, with respect to um, learning how to or establishing your boundaries, separating your business from your personal. Erica. Well, when it comes to finances, uh, personally, a lot of women, unlike the league, have, have no problem saying yes. And, and they don't say no. So that's why I, I do the CPR, cash plan resuscitation, put your own mask on first and learn to say no. And my family laughs at me because I say no and it, there's no other thing behind it. No is the answer. I don't owe you an explanation. It's just no, I don't, you know, I'm not gonna do it. Um, so when it comes to that, just on the personal side, learn to say no, put your own mask on first and not be afraid to say no. And also don't be afraid to look at your numbers. And then on the business side, it's the same thing, you know, accept the things that are gonna move your business forward, something to ask yourself for everything that you're doing, what you think you're doing for your business, as opposed to being busy, just ask yourself, is this helping me with my business? Is this helping me 
with my business to grow. So that those are the boundaries when you find yourself kind of spinning your wheels and not maybe your, your bank account don't equal the amount of work that you're putting in. Take a step back and say, is this really working to move my business forward? So those are a couple of boundaries I would offer on the personal and on the business side. Well, you know, and it's so true. No means no in every language, right? So when you're saying no to someone, you don't have to have backup material or, or, or backup noise, background noise <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to justify why you said no, right? Yep. Saying no to something is saying yes to yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Alicia, what about you and boundaries? So the first thing I'll tell my clients is you have to say no. So your yes matters. That's the first thing. And in that no, you know, we talked, you said personal and professional. I believe they both actually are co-mingled because when you say no to something, it provides you with time on the other end, maybe to spend time with your family, go to that soccer game or, or whatever that may look like. And even to Erica's point, you know, in business, we, we have a lot of opportunities that we're presented with. It's just going to happen that way. And there is something within us too, ego wise, where sometimes we want to say yes, because it, it, it strokes the ego. Oh, well, this person asked me to speak. This person asked me to come to be at their networking event. This person, this person, this person. But to Erica's point, when you look at the numbers, does it make sense? Does do these make dollars and do these make sense? Because at the end of the day, we have to have and there has to be evidence of some kind and it has to pay you something, whether it's paying you. Sometimes it may not be financial. Maybe it's paying you in contacts, maybe. But that will eventually become a financial avenue. So you have to get really clear. So the first thing that I do when I that I will tell each of you to do is what is your mission? Because your mission is your North Star. And if something, if a request does not align with your mission, it is a no. So my mission is to connect the hearts and minds of leaders to take them to and through their path of infinite possibilities. So if it doesn't do that, if it is something that falls flat, if it is something that does not align, I am clear. See, because I know immediately now, when we start to allow the other parts to take over, oh, I'm going to feel bad. They're not going to like me. That's something different. But when you have that mission, that mission is your North Star, and you know if it's a yes or if it's a no. That's right. Follow that North Star. <laughs> Galit, do you have anything else on boundaries? To so add? when you said boundaries, the first thing that came to me was my boundaries between me and my clients. Uh, I do really well with personal and business boundaries because I know that I'll work my business 24 hours a day if I let myself. So for example, I set my week up where Fridays I'm done by noon and then I go play with my guy for half a day because he's off on Fridays. And then weekends, I like to work in the morning when everybody's asleep because it's quiet and I don't have the distractions of the phone calls. But the second my family's awake, I'm done. So I'm good with that. But clients for me is a key to success. It is written in my contracts and it is voiced in our, in our housekeeping first meetings very clearly what is included in my coaching. And if you don't establish those boundaries, your clients will take advantage of every method possible to connect you. My clients do not have my cell phone number. My clients do not private message me. Their package includes email and live sessions. And even email it's written in the contract, nine to five, Monday through Friday, Pacific time, excluding holidays is when you'll hear back from me. So I've never had a problem with that. I've been doing coaching now for five years. I've never had a problem with that. And in my commercial real estate, it's very different because we initially keep bankers hours. So commercial agents are not expected to work on weekends or after five or six. So I've never had a problem there, but I highly suggest establishing boundaries from the beginning in a contract and voicing it. That alone will cause you to have the ability to have personal time versus business time. I see we have a question in the chat. Are there any recommendations on how to build a marketing plan? 
My issue is reaching more people and conversions. I started my clothing brand during the pandemic and now I'm starting to feel a bit defeated After investing in programs that opened my eyes to the world of passive income while homeschooling my daughter. So uh, let's, let's, um, let's kind of unpack this a little bit. Um, are there any recommendations? What do you recommend um, on how to build a marketing plan? Erica, I'll start with you. Well, what the first thing is knowing who your clients are, right? You have to know who you're serving. Um, you know, I don't know if you went and said, you know, everybody needs my stuff or, you know, I'm just speaking to women. Um, you have to know what type of woman are you speaking to? Is it a woman who um, is a traveler? Is it a woman who is single or married? And so you have to zone in on who you're marketing to. Uh, sometimes we think that, if we throw a wide net, then that's good. You know, we'll just catch some people, but sometimes it's just better to niche it down to, uh, niche it down to just one group of people and you're talking directly to that person. And if other people hear it, great, but you'll reach more people when you're specific in who you're trying to target. So I think that's the first thing with marketing, knowing who it is that you're speaking to. Great advice, Alicia. I would say, do you know where your people play? You know, a lot of times we start, oh, let me go on Twitter. Let me go on, what is it, TikTok. Let me go, on, you, we're all over the place. So you have to be doing your market research to understand where that target audience, as Erica said, where do they play? Where do they hang out? And what types of things do they talk about? So you can get all of that just from market research and kind of, watching your people online and watching their dialogues, getting their feedback, you know, and because when you know who they are and where they are, then you can target them directly. And then you can begin to get feedback on those particular marketing posts in that way. And also another thing I would say too is, you know, yes, online is beautiful and, and the world is opening back up, but I also see online a lot of opportunities. So make sure you're in the right Facebook groups too, where there is online vendor opportunities that are, do not cost a lot. So it gives you a chance to get new eyes, see new people, not just be the same feeds of your friends and family. So really diversifying once you know who you're speaking to. Diversification is key. And Galit, what would you advise? Well, I'm going to piggyback on what Erica and Alicia said, because I would say exactly what they did, but I'm going to take it. It's like we kind of went one after the other, which was perfect. I would say the key to marketing, aside from doing everything that Erica and Alicia said, and please do that first before you do what I'm going to say, is you've got to have a plan and you've got to plan it in advance. So I'm all about automation and I'm all about planning. So you might want to, if you have somebody that's working with you, I suggest you have them do it if it's your social media person. A lot of women start out doing it themselves. I did too. And what you want to do is you want to make a plan. You set aside about two hours right now, set aside in the next week, two hours, set out your marketing plan. Know exactly what you're going to be posting on the social medias, like Alicia said, where your ideal client is. And if it's pictures, if it's written post, whatever, and think always, how can I be seen as the expert in the area that I am in? So I'm stating this in general so everybody can use it. So if it's clothing, I want people to love my clothing. I want people to buy my clothing and I want them to know I'm the one they should be coming to to buy this type of clothing. So everything should be. So how do you do that? Sit down, take a spreadsheet, take an Excel sheet, take something and put in the days of the month and start plugging in pictures and start plugging in writing and then go online and find an automated site. I love Buffer. There's a thousand. 
there's probably 30 top ones, but I use Buffer and you schedule your posts. So that way you don't have to get up in the morning and worry about posting because we get busy and then we didn't do it by the end of the day. So that is part of your marketing plan. And that is what's going to cause consistency. And you've got to be consistent because people forget about you. I'm sorry. Social media is like three second attention span. So if you're not consistently in front of them, but then your competitor is, they're going to buy on that day that they're looking for that shirt from your competitor. So you want to be consistent in your marketing plan as well. Okay. And one more question before we wind things up for the evening. How do you feel about boosting social media for marketing? How do you feel about boosting social media for marketing? Galit. Do you want me to just jump in? I think they mean boosting a post on Facebook, I'm assuming. And if that's not correct, please let us know in the chat box. But if you're talking about boosting a post, I've done that quite often in, on my Facebook business page. And I usually do it when I have an upcoming workshop or I have an upcoming event. What that does is, okay, so Facebook is pay to play. It's just what it is. So if you have a Facebook business page, it's really tough to get a lot of engagement on it. That's why a lot of us use our personal page because our personal page is really what people are seeing, but the business page is there for credibility. So when you boost a post now, it's actually showing it to the people that like your page if that's what you choose. So for example, I a lot of times will pay 10 bucks, it's really inexpensive or 20 bucks for seven days and it'll actually show it to the people that have already liked my page, but you can also keep, you can also pick an audience. But when you pick a broader audience, they don't know who you are. So I recommend it when I know it's a money maker. I don't just randomly boost my posts. So it's typically related to an end goal that I want them to join a class, come to a workshop, uh, learn more about a product, something like that. And, oh, this is a good question. Most of my clients come from referrals from me networking at events. I prefer offline. Social media is just not my forte. Any advice? And is this mm -hmm. a marketing question, person? <laughs> Well, I, I'll jump in just, and I know Kali and Alicia may have something else to say, but what I, I will say in regards to that, you got to change your mindset. Um, we are going virtual. So whether you like it or not, you got to get used to it if you're looking to grow your business. Um, you know, we're slowly coming back out, but it's, it's really going to be virtual and that's how you're going to grow your business. So it's a change of mindset, embracing it, saying, you know, I love that I get to show up to, to many people that I would not have been able to reach face to face. One of the things that I talked about before was the, when we were meeting face to face, um, the cost of networking. Um, because when I started out, I was going everywhere. And I was like, I looked at my bank account. And I was like, wait, this just don't match up. And so I had to scale back and say, where do I like the people? And where do I think that my people are going to be? They're going to be great referral resources for me. Because I, when I first started, I was showing up because I thought I was going to get business because somebody said, you, you network. And I'm like, okay, well, I ain't get no business. And they said, no, you got to build relationships. Oh, Nobody told me that, right? So I had to learn that. So when you when you think about networking as a whole, think about the time that you're looking up the different programs, the time that you're driving to the event, getting dressed, being at the event, uh, following up, you know, that can be very costly, you know, depending on how much you make per hour when you break it down, you can be investing $500 at an event and you haven't even met a person yet. Um, but now we can't do that. And we have the opportunity to meet so many more people online virtually and just expand what, what it, whatever your business is. So I think, you know, just coming to embrace and saying that, you know, you get to meet so many more people versus I just like doing things offline and, and in person. 
It really does expand your universe, this, this virtual uh, reset that we're in. It really, really does. I mean, we're on a global platform right now. And uh, this recording is going to be viewed by folks in other countries, as well as folks here in America. That's big, that's huge. Um, do either one of my panelists, either Alicia, yeah, you wanna add? I would love to add that um, here's the thing. Some of us are comfortable in what we've always done, right? So we, we built neuro pathways that align with, oh, what we've done, this is where I'm comfortable, this is where I wanna stay. But what you're really seeking to grow and scale your business is outside of your comfort zone, as I said earlier. So a lot of times, and I know this even for myself when I was first getting kind of into the online marketing, we don't know where to start. So we just immediately categorize it as, I don't like it. So I'm going to invite you and challenge you, whoever you are who posted that question or that statement and say, look at one platform, just one. Don't try to go to Instagram. I mean, there's so many, I don't even know. TikTok, lick, lock, bop, bop, you know, everything. There's so much now, but one platform. So maybe you start with Facebook, right? Because that's one of most, many of us are most familiar with. Start with Facebook, kind of play around with, okay, there's some opportunities here on Facebook. Let me, let me learn a little something. So educate yourself, right? Because as Erica said, you can't spend money on everything, but I'm going to tell you, YouTube is a university. Okay. So <laughs> spend some time on YouTube university. That's what I call it. And look at, you know, what is, how can I reach more people on Facebook? Now don't go down the rabbit hole because everybody has something to say, but start to give yourself a little education and say, okay, it may not be so bad. Post a few of your little pieces on there. Post a few of whatever, if it's jewelry, if it's a, a service, if it's clothing, we were talking about clothing earlier, post a few things on there and see the feedback that you get. And then start, as you start posting, you tap into your family at first. Maybe you want to just tap into your family. Hey, y'all, I posted a little something. I would love it if you would share my post. So people can start sharing and other people can start knowing you. That is why, as Galit said earlier, it's important to have a business page because now people can start following your business. And eventually, you may want to boost that post. And now you'll have more eyes on that post. You can utilize I do it too. Sometimes utilize my personal profile and I kind of tap into my friends and my network. Can you share this? I'm going to be doing this event. Would you mind sharing it? So you can get some organic traffic and you can just start with one platform. Don't try to go crazy because it will overwhelm the mind. Just one platform and see what you get. So I'm going to challenge you, whoever you are, you have an assignment, one platform, <laughs> research <laughs> and execution. Just one, just one thing. And, and I'm going to hold that person accountable because I know who asked that question. <laughs> so I will ask for her homework assignment. Alicia, how many days should we give her for, uh, to complete her homework assignment? Well, okay. So you know her, is she a parent? Yes. Okay. Is she homeschooling her, her children? No. Okay. No. Okay. So she has time during the day or does she? Well, go? she's, she's running business. She's, she owns companies. <laughs> okay, so we're going to give her, so she's going to set aside, so what she's going to do to ensure her success is set aside a certain block of time, as Galit said, time blocking works, it's proven, it's a proven success practice, time block, so give yourself two days a week that you time block 60 minutes, so that's two hours a week to do your research, I would say, and at the end of the so two hours the first week, two hours the second week, you should be ready that third week to get busy with that posting. So that's fair. Two weeks. <laughs> All right. I got you. Got you. <laughs> Ladies, you have Dr. been. Dr. Monica, yes. oh, way nicer to me than me. I wouldn't have given her that much time. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, way nicer. <laughs> Ladies, you have been um, an invaluable resource to all of us this evening. And I thank you so much for joining us 
here at WGCLV for our first Business Bounce Back panel. Do you have any final words for our gathering here? Starting with Erica. All right, so ladies, it was a pleasure just meeting you all. It's just been awesome. And I just want to show, like, I have my social media calendar. So I, I, I know what's going to be posted on what day. So I'm, I'm prepared, right? So <laughs> it works. And I don't have to worry about thinking every morning, ah, oh, what, what am I going to do? Uh, but I would say in regards to, let me fix my uh, little thing there. I don't know what happened there. But in regards to... Um, the personal finance reset, I would say there's nothing uh, more secure than knowing your numbers. And that starts with knowing your prosperity plan, getting your budget together. Don't be afraid to look at the numbers. Uh, they'll tell you one of two things, you're doing well, or you can be doing better, right? And so when you know better, you do better. Don't run from it. And another thing, um, as I'm sure most of you probably heard, uh, taxes. They were extended it until May 17th, but just know that is for federal only. State has not yet said we're extending hours. So two different things. And then also unemployment, the first 10,200, you don't have to pay taxes on. So uh, hold off on those amendments if you, if you filed them already, but just know that you can go back and uh, that amount will be taken off of your taxes. Awesome. Thank you, Erica. Alicia. I would say that many of us have a dream, right? We've had a dream about a business. We've had a dream about a particular outcome, about what we can offer this world. But without a plan, it is simply still out of reach. You have got to have a plan. And a lot of us as women, we do not create plans. We just start executing in chaos and about what we think we should do. So you've got to create a plan. The strategy that you execute will bring the success that you already absolutely know innately is yours. But you cannot operate in chaos. You cannot operate willy-nilly. You've got to be specific. So as Erica and Galit have said so eloquently tonight as well, the plan for social media, if that is relevant for you right now, the plan for your numbers, that is relevant for you. Anyone owning a business, your numbers are part of your plan. So you have to execute with a plan. No chaos. You've got to know operations is the number one reason why businesses fail. They do not operate appropriately. So write yourself a plan. Even if you just start tonight, write something down and begin to put things in an order that you can then move into action behind. That is what I have to say. Thank you, Alicia. And Galit, final words. Mm, yeah, I think for me, I've seen it over and over again where women get overwhelmed because they don't know the how. So my suggestion would be to recognize that there are millions and millions and millions of people in this world that know how to do things that you may not know how to do. There are a lot of things I don't know how to do. There are a lot of things I won't even try to do. I know better. So please recognize that reaching out and asking for support and help is like Alicia said, university, YouTube University. I mean, seriously, guys, we got like technology at our fingertips. We're like brilliant today because we just asked Google, right? I just say the word, my phone turns on. So please don't let that stop you. And then the second thing that stops people is overwhelm. So I ask you to do one new thing that will become a domino effect to getting you where you want to go. So just one thing at a time, break it down. If there's a big, huge overwhelm project, break it down into little steps. Just make time for those little steps. That'll get you where you wanna go. Wonderful. And as we close tonight at the top of this wonderful uh, session, I mentioned two things, two housekeeping notes that I'd like to reiterate again. The first is WGCLV, we are having a March membership drive where we are inviting you to become new members of our chapter for the month of March for free. 
This is a $197 value. And um, why not? Join us. And I, I put the link in the chat below. And also WGC, uh, Women of Global Change, our founder, Dame Shelley Hunt, is hosting our very first Spring Forward 2021 event this Sunday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, the registration is in the chat, but we are looking for, we are collaborating with Feed the Children, 10,000 meals for 10,000 kids. Just $15 will put 75 meals on the table. And we are right now, as she's bringing in speakers, we're looking at um, award-winning author, Sharon Lecter of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, motivation, oh, international motivational speaker, Les Brown, and global TV mogul, Ms. Tina Michelle. And the speakers, are coming in daily. So this will be a great event, a uh, wonderful fundraiser. And um, I invite you all to join us this Sunday. Uh, the information is in the link for registering. And on that note, thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate all of you. And I look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank so much. you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> hey, cousin. Hey, Monica, how are you? Wonderful. It's wonderful seeing you. This is very interesting. I enjoyed it. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you were here. Yeah, I mean, too, the, the um, Sunday program looks interesting, too. Yeah, you know what? I'll start posting um, in, in your group. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because um, I do a fireside chat where I have different guests every week. And um, next week, or this coming Thursday, every Thursday from 5.30 to 6.30, this coming Thursday, I'm bringing on this incredible woman. She's a doctor, she's a pediatrician, right? But she's just written a book and she's talking about fitness through the ages. And when I put up, you'll see when I post her flyer, she was the first African-American gymnast on the Olympic level at Stanford University back in the wow. 60s. That photograph of her in, in like, she took like 1974 side by side to 2020. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh, that she's sounds gonna great. Come, she's going to come on next Thursday and share okay. all of her tips and tricks and all of that. And I'm like, look, we want to know all your tips and tricks and flips. Yes. Yeah. At the same time next week? Uh, yes. Next okay. Thursday at 530 only an hour from 5.30 to 6.30. Okay, great. Sounds good. I look forward. All right, my dear. Okay. Love you. You take care. Love you much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.